Okay, so here's number six. April is going to the bakery to purchase donuts and cinnamon rolls for the office personnel. She must purchase at least 30 items. She has collected only $30. So total cost must be no more than $30. If D represents donuts that cost 75 cents each and R represents cinnamon rolls that cost $1.25 each, which system of inequalities can be used to represent the region of the numbers of donuts and cinnamon rolls April, April could purchase? So the thing to remember is that D represents donuts and R represents cinnamon rolls. Okay, so just knowing that, we know that a donut costs 75 cents per donut and a cinnamon roll costs $1.25 per roll. So you can look over here and look at the values that they have. This one has $1.25 per donut. Not true. $1.25 per donut. Still not true. We do know that she needs to get 30 items. Well, she needs to get at least 30 items. So the donuts plus the cinnamon rolls must be at least 30. And so we have the word at least again. Remember, at least is a reference to she can have 30, she can have 31, but she can't have 29. So we know that it has to be greater than or equal to 30. Okay, just knowing that we know what the final answer is, but we'll put it all together because she has to have 75 cents for donuts, $1.25 for rolls, and she only collected $30. So since all she collected was $30 for this food items we know that she can spend thirty dollars but she probably prefers that if it's less than thirty so here is going to be our inequality b is going to be our final answer 75 cents per donut dollar 25 per roll has to be at least um thirty dollars and then she needs at least thirty donuts or rolls so that one should be b as in baseball one here I'm hoping you can look at and be able to determine excuse me be able to determine which point is the solution of the system of inequalities this triangular section in here is all of your solutions anything that's not in the overlap section is not going to be a solution so what that means is if we start looking at the points four I'm sorry four three four and up to three would be somewhere around here not in a shaded region not a solution 2, negative 2, we go 2 to the right and down 2 in a shaded region is a solution. Negative 4, 3, negative 4, positive 3 would be somewhere over here. Not a solution, not in a shaded region. 2, 5, 2, up to 5. Not in a shaded region, not a solution. Your final answer is G. And just to double check which point is a solution to the system. So we got is, we're looking for one that will check out, and that one works. So that's seven. Number eight gave a lot of information. So if you want to pause the video and read it, you can. But in short, what it's saying is that he wanted to test the origin zero, zero to see if it will be a solution to the set. So what we're trying to figure out, if I plug in a zero here, on the first equation, 0 is less than or equal to a negative 5 halves times 0 minus 4. This is the same thing as 0 is less than or equal to 0 minus 4. So your question to yourself should be, is 0 less than or equal to a negative 4? Negative 4 is further to the left. Doesn't work there. Okay, then we look at the second inequality that's given. So the second inequality says that zero is less than a negative one half times zero plus one. All I did was plug in a zero for both x. Sorry, I wrote that wrong again. So I plugged in a zero for x and a zero for y. So what happens is um, I have 0 is less than 0 plus 1. And once that's simplified, 0 is less than 1. This one works out. So the question that says that bird is correct 
No, he's not because one works and one doesn't. He's incorrect. The origin is the solution instead of the first inequality. The origin is a solution set for the second inequality, but it is not a solution set for the first inequality. Okay, so that one, number eight, you should have passed C. Number nine could kind of be viewed as a throwback problem because this is something that you may have seen in Algebra 1. The graph shows the height of Cindy's model rocket during the course of a flight, which of these equations can be used to find the height of the rocket at any time during this flight. What I first need you to understand is that the parent function of all parabolas looks something like this, x squared. Once we decide that we are going to flip this thing upside down, what happens is we still have a graph of x squared, but it becomes negative. Because this parabola is going upside down or it opens downward, a and D are both not answers. Why? Because there is no negative in front of those values. So there's a negative here and here. Now your next choice would be to decide. 0, 0, the origin is a solution, and 9, 0 is a solution. Now for me, this point here, 0, 0, would be the one of choice only because I don't want to have to deal with a 9, okay? If I plug in a 0 for x, I should get a 0 for y, meaning that that has to be a solution. So I start here. 0 on y is equal to a negative 0 squared plus 9 times 0, okay? Now hopefully we know that 0 is equal to 0 squared is 0. 9 times 0 is 0. C is your answer. Now, just as a formality, I can substitute in a 0 for y over here on uh, the answer choice D. Okay, and now we get 0 is equal to 9 because this part right here, 0 squared is 0 again, and 0 times 9 is 0. So that would be 9 minus 0. And this is saying that 0 is equal to 9, which is not true. Okay, so for that reason alone, C is our final answer. Feel free to pause at any point, but um, a quadratic function has in a, x-intercepts negative 2, 0, and 8, 0, with a maximum of 3, uh, 50, which equation represents the function. So the first thing that you have to know is, is that you can let, um, well, this one goes from 8 to 2, so we can let P be 8 and Q is 2. So let's see. P is 8, and Q is a negative 2. Don't forget my negative sign. So what this would mean, according to the equation that we have been studying in class for the past couple days now, then um, whatever A is, we'll let it be. But what definitely has to be in your equation is X minus 8 times X minus a negative 2 which is the same thing as y is equal to x minus 8 times x plus 2. So just on that formality alone, we can get rid of b, and that's it, okay? So then the next step is to figure out what um, which equation will work. Now at this point, I don't want you to waste too much time. Go ahead and put it in the graph and see what happens, what's true or what's not. Um, this says that it has a maximum, so if at the very least, a maximum is going to be your highest point. Um, the parabola could look something like this. So meaning if it has a maximum of 350, what that's going to mean overall is that it's going to be a negative graph. That value is gone. Okay, so then that's all the shortcuts that I have for you, really. The only thing that I'm going to do next is substituting the values for y and x in order to determine what the value is for a. So give me a second, let me get that situated. Okay, so here's everything substituted in, 50 for y, 3's for x, and p and q. So what's going to happen here is that 50 is going to equal a, 3 minus 8, negative 5, 3 minus a negative 2 is the same thing as 3 plus 2, so we'll get 5, okay? Um, 50 is going to equal a negative 5 
times 5 times a is going to be a negative 25a. The last step is going to be to divide both sides by a negative 25, and a is going to be a negative 2. Okay, so once you figure out what a is, c is going to be our answer. Now, what I want you to notice is that if you would have divided this the wrong way, you could have picked d. Okay, so make sure we pay attention to our signs and what we're doing. 